So let's talk about personnel planning and recruiting today and take a close look at what it takes to fill the pipeline and to have the right people in place. So we will talk about forecasting and we will talk about um, getting the right diversity mix in there and so on. So I am clicking on buttons and nothing is happening here. Okay, so work for the four areas we will talk about today are workforce planning, effective recruiting, where do you find can candidates, so your sources of candidates and creating a diverse workforce. So um, workforce planning, let's examine some of the principles and that we use for planning and forecasting here. So here's an overview. And um, when we talk about job analysis, um, Job analysis identifies the duties and the human requirements for each um, of the company's jobs. And then we go through these steps. So um, we will look at each of the jobs and um, we build a, recruit, a recruiting plan. So we build a pool of candidates and how do we do that? Um, we're going to look at what candidates, are, candidates might be available, what are the needs. We have candidates complete application forms. We use selection tools like tests and different things to screen the applicants. And then we have supervisors and other methods to interview the final candidates. Um, basically, we get a big pool and we try to bring it down to a manageable amount of the best qualified people. And then we interview those and those candidates then become employees, right? Um, so I used to work very closely with a, with a hospital and um, we placed a lot of our students in that hospital. And the HR officer would tell us that they typically opened jobs, um, posted them, right? So they opened it. So they posted it for the public around 4 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon in, every day. And um, whatever they had in the pipeline that was ready to be posted, they would post it around that time, end of the workday. And then they said that typically by the time they came to work in the morning by 8 a.m., they would have somewhere between 100 and 200 applicants. And so they didn't feel that they could afford to look at more than that many people. And so when they would come in the next morning, they would close that job. So, and then they would look at those candidates. And their philosophy was, from a pool of 100 to 200 people, certainly they could find a qualified candidate to hire. And so they always told our students, if you wanted a job, you needed to look every night at their job board. We found that insane, but they said, you know, we don't want to leave a job out there and have 500 applications that we need to look at. So their practice was post it by five, pull it down by 9 a.m., we're certainly going to have enough people. So it's a very interesting philosophy, but it made a lot of sense to them. So workforce planning and forecasting, also known as employment or personnel planning, is a process of deciding what positions the firm will have to fill and then how to fill them. And the exercise you did yesterday is similar to this kind of concept. So companies will use dashboards to tr try to forecast and try to predict what their needs are going to be and try to keep track of what 
that might be. Um, so it should be an integral part of the firm's strategic planning process. Um, you want to know. So if you have a, a very stable workforce that tends to stay for a long time, then you know um, who's retiring, you know who is going on maternity leave, you know who is planning on moving away, and you can have a pretty good sense. On the other hand, um, Google, for example, a few years ago was um, a company that had the highest turnover rate in the nation. And they could not keep their employees. Their turnover rate was nearing 30% a year. Um, can you imagine almost a third of your employees were new every single year? It is extremely expensive and it is very inefficient. And so they knew in their planning that they had a really big problem and they had to be planning very, very strategically, very, very fast. Now in, high, in technology companies, it is normal to have um, a high turnover rate, um, but not at that extent. So um, if you look at Apple and Facebook and Google, if they are at 15 to 20%, they consider that to be a fairly average um, turnover rate. So forecasting personnel needs or the labor demands. So they look at trends, they look at the racial analysis, they may do some scatter plotting, they'll do some managerial judgment, but the bottom line is they need to know, they need to predict and they need to have people in the pipeline ready to go so that there isn't very much downtime. Um, so this is just an idea of how they would make some of those predictions and where they would be going to get some of how they would fill some of their vacancies. Um, so forecasting the supply of outside candidates, managers can get a sense of what's happening. They can supplement with formal labor market analysis. So when I was in college, um, I started working for um, a company, excuse me. I started working for a company that um, placed people in summer jobs, basically to fill um, spots for vacations and so on. And um, I was a very good typist. I had very good computer skills. Um, and so it was very easy for me to get in. So I had some really good um, early on jobs that paid very, very well. Um, because of my computer skills, I was making three to four times minimum wages and um, didn't really need to worry about getting internships. In fact, some of my jobs turned in, two of my jobs turned into internships. But like one summer, I worked for the governor of, um, of Wisconsin and um, his, his secretary was going on uh, maternity leave for the summer. And so they needed someone to fill in and they put an advertisement out for someone with a certain skill set. And because I had worked for this office before, um, then they took me on. So what is that? So it's an outside candidate. It's a temp um, position, but it's a very long term. So I was there a full three months while she was gone. Um, and it was nice because then they didn't have to do the, the, the paperwork, she could come back to her job, et cetera. But there are other ways of filling, right? So um, companies want to know what those ways are so that they don't have to, um, 
so they don't have to hire and fire and, and, and they can have a pool that is ready to go. Um, they want this systematic succession planning. So systematically identifying, assessing, and developing organizational leadership. Um, so they identify key positions that are needed. They develop inside candidates. They choose people to fill those positions and so on. So, um, so then we want to effectively recruit and then we want to recruit more effectively. So um, we want to, we don't want to waste our time. We don't want to waste money with advertisements that don't work. And uh, we won't, don't want to keep positions open for a very long time. So why is effective recruiting important? Um, so we want, we want to get the right recruiters. So finding, attracting the right applicants, um, the employers not keeping the positions open forever. Um, so if we have only, if we have an, a, a, an opening and nobody applies or only one or two people apply, then we don't know if we're getting the best candidates or not. Um, so we want to be able to be able to screen and know that we're hiring the best candidates, right? So we want to be able to assess um, which are the best um, options and the best recruiting options for the job in question. And then the employer's brand is also being affected if you have a position out there and it's not being filled. Um, we always looked at how frequently um, that same position got um, put out on the market again. So if you see the same position advertised over and over and over again, you start to wonder, is it a good company to work for? So you really want, you know, it, it does hurt their brand if they have to keep posting the position over and over again. So here's an example of a recruiting yield um, pyramid. So for example, let's say that you generate 1200 leads and there's a six to one um, um, cleanup. I don't know, how do you say? but um, you eliminate um, a thousand. So then you invite um, 200 people, you look at them um, and then from the 200 people, you do a four to three ratio and you interview um, 1500 from the 15 or 150 you actually make 100 offers and 50% um, of them accept. So a company needs to understand what those ratios are in their industry and for their company so that they can make better, um, better decisions. So a lot of companies start with internal sources and they offer jobs internally first and then they go externally. So internal sources, you look at your current employees, you hire from within, you post jobs for internal promotions first, and you look at, sometimes they have like a pool of um, internal qualifications and skills inventories that they can pull from first. And if they don't have an internally qualified person, they go outside and um, it builds a lot of loyalty when people know that they can get, they get first dibs on a promotion. Um, then outside sources, there are a lot. So employers can always get the people from the current staff, so they have to go outside. So um, a lot of job openings really are not advertised because um, the, their, people are already connected. So um, 
it's filled informally. Um, employees are telling friends about the jobs or um, employers, it's word of mouth, right? So they say that up to 60% of jobs or 65% of jobs are filled through word of mouth. Um, it could be like a LinkedIn search, not because it was advertised on LinkedIn, but because people are making connections or they met um, at some sort of a networking event or something like that. So those connections are very, very important. Then there are a lot of recruiting over the internet. So a company could put an ad on their website or there's job boards or there's virtual job fairs. And there's pros and cons to these, but um, these are used a lot. And Indeed is the number one job board out there right now, but there are others that are very popular. Um, Monster is less popular today, but it's still used quite a bit. Career Builder is very popular. Glassdoor is very popular. And then if in your specialized field, um, you should become aware of what the, the job boards are. So in marketing, Adweek is a very popular one for that I refer my students to. Um, using recruitment software and artificial intelligence as well. So there are online systems, um, applicant tracking systems, application service providers, artificial intelligence systems. Um, there can be bias introduced in those systems. So you have to be very careful with those, but um, there are systems that will actually screen applications for you and all of that sort of thing. So um, there are systems that will help you go through the, the myriads of applications that you could receive. Then you could use employment agencies and there are a lot of different types of employment agencies. There are public agencies, there are nonprofit, there are private agencies as well. Um, there are recruiting process outsourcers or on-demand de recru recruiting services. And these are special vendors that will handle all or most of an employer's recruiting needs. So basically you hire someone or a company to um, find you people for a fee. Then um, there are alternative staff, staffing or temp agencies um, and there's the gig economy. So um, one of the things that HR agents are saying today is that COVID created a whole new, because, because of all the layoffs, people started creating their own streams of income in the gig economy. And today HR is wanting people to come back to work and people are opting to stay and do contract work. And so the gig economy has transformed um, a lot of jobs into part-time or temporary jobs. And, um, and companies are hurting because of it. Um, today, I got an email from a friend of mine in St. Joe, and he was like, hey, can you circulate at Andrews? Anybody with a background in IT I'm desperately looking for students or, um, or recent grads who can work in IT. So I passed it on to the computer science people um, that um, he's looking for employees. And he says he's been looking for three or four months and hasn't been able to fill his positions. And it's in part due to this. So, um, you also have contract employees where you hire them for a certain amount of time. And you've got to be very, very careful with um, the employment laws if you have contract employees because there are liabilities and there are limitations to what you can ask them to do if they are contract. Um, Companies are also choosing to outsource. So rather than have people do things 
inside your company, they pay outside people to do the jobs or offshore shoring, which means they're doing the same thing but having a company overseas do the work for them. Um, you also have executive recruiters. I have a friend in St. Joe who is an executive recruiter and also called a headhunter. Um, so an executive would actually pay her a fee and she would work for that executive to help that executive find a job. Um, and she would, she would network for them and she actually pay, you would pay her a fee and then um, she gets paid by the company as well. <coughs> um, so you need to know what you're doing when you use a recruiter like that because you could spend a lot of money and not get a job. Um, and they're typically used for high executive positions. They're not used at lower levels. Um, so recruiting, you've got college recruiters, you've got internships, you've got military personnel, you've got all sorts of referrals and walk-ins. Um, and the bottom line is you really need to work in every way possible. And I'm gonna talk now to um, a student population. Um, you need to put yourself out there to, um, to network and to reach out um, and to look for organizations that are doing this, these activities and are recruiting. Um, companies will have events and they will post their announcements. So um, employers will look for the best ways possible to get the word out there that they are, um, that they have jobs available. So then finally, um, recruiting a more diverse workforce. We are very aware of the fact that um, we need to ensure that um, we have a more diverse workforce and that um, companies are trying to ensure that they are placing more um, women and single parents and older workers and minorities and disabled workers across the board into leadership and into every piece of and pocket of the organization. Um, because the more diverse your organization is, the better ideas you have and the better functioning the organization actually is. And companies are recognizing that, um, that that is a very good way to operate. So this is, uh, the highlights of, of the personnel planning and recruiting. And I hope this has given you some good ideas and some good overview um, insights.